Hello, Nintendo Wii here, welcome to Retro Gamer Week, episode 13. This week we'll be taking a look at the NES and Famicom game, Mega Man 5. Mega Man 5 has to be one of the best games in the original Mega Man series. This one was a suggestion from Laura Shigihara. Definitely go and have a look at her YouTube channel if you get the chance, she does some fantastic music. She actually did the theme song for one of my favourite games and that is To The Moon, so she's a fantastic person and definitely go and check out her work because it's brilliant. As you'd expect from any 8-bit Mega Man game, the music and graphics are just fantastic. Apparently, according to a little bit inside the Mega Man Complete Works book, this game had a different project lead compared to the others, and yet to be retrained on what exactly makes a Mega Man game a Mega Man game. So apparently that's why this game is slightly easier than it is. Although I said it is easy, it can still be a bit of a challenge. Compared to number 2 and 3, for example, it is a lot easier to get through and Probably a lot of people won't really enjoy this one, but I'd say it's a really good place to start if you want to get into the Mega Man series. Mega Man didn't really have any new moves this time, he still has the charge shot from Mega Man 4 and the slide from Mega Man 3. The charge shot is a bit more powerful compared to Mega Man 4 and not quite as annoying either. There's plenty of new power-ups to enjoy in the game, including the gravity hold, the water wave, power stone, the gyro attack which comes from pretty much Airman's stage. Star Crash, which is, again, something from Mega Man 2, pretty much exactly the same as Leaf Man or whatever his name is. The Charge Kick, the Napalm Bomb, and the Crystal Eye. First up is Stone Man. He has you going through a cave, fighting robots underground, and then eventually coming up onto the surface with an amazing background with some mountain ranges. And finally you get to fight him. He's a pretty easy boss, one of the easier, easier bosses in the game. Next up is Gravity Man, this level is really cool. It's got a really nice mechanic where the gravity actually switches depending on what section of the level you're in. You can see little arrows on the floor and the ceiling and that depends on whether you fly up or down the, the screen. It's a really nice idea and makes for a really cool level. And it's got an interesting boss fight which switches the gravity while you're playing. Now, Crystal Man. I don't really like Crystal Man much, to be honest. His level is very frustrating. You can't tell when the crystals are going to come out of the ceiling. They just, like, drop down completely randomly and there's every chance that you can just get pushed off into a pit and die over and over and over again. And the boss fight's kind of boring too. Charge Man. Charge Man's level kind of reminds me of Nitro Man from Mega Man 10. You go around on top of and inside of a train, which is really cool, and definitely looks amazing for the NES and Famicom. The graphics they managed to get out of this game are just fantastic.
there's Waveman, which is another really cool level. There's like a jet ski section in the middle where you have to go across the waves and shoot the enemies as they fly towards you and dodge fish coming out of the water and all sorts of cool things. It's got really nice music and there's a fun mini boss halfway through. Starman, which reduces the gravity. It always kind of reminds me of that level in Mario Land 2 on the Game Boy where you're floating around on the moon. Mega Man's jumps are a lot um, higher than normal, so he can just float up and down. It kind of feels like you're playing underwater, but you're in space. It's a really nice level, and it's got a fun boss fight. Gyro Man, which is basically Air Man or t Tornado Man. It's a fun level, it starts off with you going up in a lift and then you play the rest of the level kind of in the clouds, it's really cool. Here's a really nice level, it looks really nice. It's set in a jungle, kind of like Woodman from Mega Man 2, but it looks a million times better. Although his boss fight is ridiculously easy. Once you've killed all the bosses, it's on to Darkman. Darkman's easily one of the best parts of the game. The music's fantastic. It is extremely challenging though, enemies come from all over the place, and it's really, really frustrating, but it feels so amazing once you've finally managed to get past it. Darkman consists of a few different stages, and along the way you'll fight some amazing boss fights that take up the entire screen. They really show off the power of the NES or the Famicom.
Once it's been revealed that Dr. Wily was behind the entire thing, then of course it's on to Dr. Wily's castle. There you have it, thanks for watching, that was a quick look at Mega Man 5. See you next week for more retro gaming goodness. Goodbye. And if you don't want to wait until next week, I've just set up my own website. I'm going to be uploading regular posts to that, so if you don't want to wait until another video, go and check that out. Thanks for watching, see you next week.